to acquire an old pen is quite a daunting task for a lot of fountain pen users. Not to mention the effort and the tools and replacement parts needed to maintain a pen in decent working condition. Therefore, an alternative is to go for vintage inspired pens. And one of such pens is this reissue of the famous Rouge et Noir from Mont Blanc. In this video, I'll go through the history, details of the pen, my experience with it for the past three months of ownership, and I would attempt to answer the question, should you get the real vintage pens or vintage inspired pens? The Rouge et Noir was first created by the predecessor of Mont Blanc, Simplo Filler Pen Co. in Hamburg, Germany in 1909. The original Rouge et Noir was made from black ebonite, a type of hard rubber made out of sulfur and linseed oil with a red finial on top of the cap, hence the name red and black. It used a safety mechanism to prevent ink spilling, but that's a topic for another day. Just note that for the modern user, this filling mechanism is not safe at all. And for the present day working environment, a safety pen is quite a hassle to be used effectively. In contrary to the vintage model, this example of the Rouge et Noir has a nice brown lacquer on the cap and the barrel. I'm not sure what kind of metal they used for the pen, but judging from the weight, I'm guessing it's brass with resin lining on the inside of the pen. The cap still keeps all the traditional details from the red finial with the Mont Blanc snow cap. The snake clip inspired from the novel Le Rouge et le Noir by Steinhoff with two synthetic garnet as the eyes of the snake and the vintage Mont Blanc logo on the side of the cap. Inside the cap, there are also some metal parts and lining to prevent the nib from drying out. The pen has a fiston filling mechanism to utilize the whole body of the pen for ink storage. And the section plus the nib are coated with this warm red gold. It's so distinctive of Mont Blanc to do so, and it gives the pen a more modern look compared to the black ebonite steel accents combo from the vintage models. Now let's talk about the heart of the pen. The nib. It's similar in size to the 144 or 145 models, but the shape has some minor differences, thus the nib has a bit more give to it. It's not necessarily as flexible as the vintage nibs, but it has some characters to the writing. And this really shows through in the writing sample. The scroll work on the nib still follows the snakehead motif with the name Mont Blanc 14K AU585 down below. I do like it better than the typical 4810 nib design from modern pens. As for the writing experience, similar to other Mont Blanc pens I've used, the nib writes effortlessly, and because of the minimal design, it does not distract me from the task of writing. The bouncy nib gives a task of shading along the downstrokes and dot, which is always nice to look at after everything dries. I would still have some issue with this pen though, mainly the slippery metal section and the lack of an ink window. But since I would always top it up after every writing session, it's not always something I would have to worry about. Also, the glossy lacquered barrel catches fingerprints quite easily, so it's another thing for me to wipe down every day. In the months of November, this pen completely replaced the Pilot 823 and the Stuck 146 as my long-form writer. Due to some circumstances, um, it will be a story for another video. Just from glancing at the design, I think you would agree that this pen is not something you would clip on your shirt, but rather a pen that sits on top of your writing desk, ready to assist you with putting your thoughts down on the paper for hours on end. Time really flies for me personally when I sit with it. And yes, I'm fanboying this reissue from Blanc. Then there's the question to go vintage or get the new release for your fountain pen collection. In my personal opinion, by the end of the day, a pen is just a writing instrument and it should do that one task really well, first and foremost, before having extra features or novelty characters to it. In a way, it's similar to vintage cars or watches. A daily driver should get you from point A to point B without much problems or hassle and requires the least amount of care and maintenance to make sure it's in working condition. However, on the other hand, vintage cars are there for you to ride on special occasions or for a nice Sunday morning cruise. It should be intended to create nostalgia and excitement 
not to work with. When it comes to vintage pens, the same philosophy applies. I do own a few vintage pens in my collection, but they are not the pens I take out on a daily basis. They have their place in my collection for thoughts and long form writing, but most days I tend to grab my modern pens to work more often than not. And this Rouge et Noir is a nice middle ground for both, a vintage look without the hassles that come with a vintage pen. But that's my personal opinions and yours may vary. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you have a Rouge et Noir, vintage or modern, or even both, what's your experience with them? What's your choice for a daily writer or long form writer, vintage or modern pens? Thank you for watching. And if you like to support the channel, there are links down below in the description. And thank you for some of the donations after the last video. And let me know your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one.